Hi! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to create an SOS application on an Android phone using Kodular and ESP. Let's get started. The concept is that within a residential complex or cluster consisting of several residents, there is usually a security post that will guard the area. The duty of these security personnel is to maintain the condition of the area, preventing any criminal activities such as theft, fire, and others. If a theft occurs in a house, and is known by the residents, it's important to send this information promptly to the security post so that it can be immediately addressed. Therefore, residents who know of such incidents can promptly send this theft information to the security post using an installed Android application. The SOS message from the Android application will be sent to an MQTT broker, which will then be received by the devices at the security post. The device placed at the security post is an ESP8266 connected to the internet network via Wi-Fi. The ESP will receive the MQTT message sent from the Android app, then display the message on a LED dot matrix. It will also activate a rotary lamp as an attention signal indicating that an SOS message has been received and needs immediate attention. To reset the displayed message, use the reset button. Similarly, if a fire occurs, residents can quickly send an SOS message from the application. In addition to theft, and fire incidents that can be swiftly reported from the application, residents can also send custom messages to the security post according to the information they want to convey. Every ESP that receives an SOS message will also send this message to the MQTT broker, which will then be received by all residents who have the SOS application, ensuring that everyone receives the same message. This is what we call an SOS application, designed to provide emergency assistance to residents when they are in emergency situations, or need quick help. And the applications are interconnected to other residents, ensuring that the same message can be received by other residents as well. Certainly, with low costs and ease of creation. Here's the code on the ESP that's being used. It requires some libraries like PubSubClient for MQTT connection, and also a library for the LED dot matrix. Don't forget to set up the Wi-Fi SSID and password, as well as the IP address of the MQTT broker being used. Also, the topic used for publishing to Android and for subscribing from Android, this should match the topic used in the Kodular application that we will create. The ESP code file, as well as other files used to create the SOS application, can be downloaded. I place the link in the video description. This is the Kodular design I've created, using several components such as buttons for quickly sending SOS messages, with two buttons available for that purpose. Then, there's a drop-down to view message options, and a text box to edit custom messages that will be sent to MQTT. Here's the block code, starting with initializing the variables to be used. Then, I'm using TinyDB to store data about the names and addresses of residents using the application. Names and addresses must be different for each resident. Establish a connection to MQTT during screen initialization, and after successfully connecting to the MQTT broker, subscribe to the defined topic. Then, in the button click block, it will publish the message to be sent after first going through a notifier for confirmation whether to send the message or cancel. Next, on the settings screen, this page consists of two text boxes for entering the name and address. Additionally, there is one text box for entering a password as confirmation before saving the name and address data to TinyDB. Next, let's test the application using the Kodular Companion. Before using the application, we need to input the name and address of the user first, as the data for residents who will use this application. The address will be used as the client ID in MQTT, so the address must not be the same as other users. After clicking save, the data will be stored in TinyDB, so when the application is closed, the name and address data will still be stored. On the home page, the name and address will be displayed at the top.
let's take a look at the hardware setup. First, I'm using a plastic panel box to store the ESP and other components. On the outside, there's a LED dot matrix for displaying messages, a rotary lamp, and buttons. Inside the panel, there's a 12-volt power supply for the rotary lamp, ESP8266, and also a one-channel relay to control the rotary lamp's power. In standby mode, the LED dot matrix will display the current time as a clock. In the Android application, press the quick message button to send a message, then a notification will appear to confirm whether you're sure to send it or cancel. After pressing OK, the message will be sent, and the ESP will display the message on the LED dot matrix and turn on the rotary lamp. To turn off the rotary lamp and return to standby mode, press the reset button. The rotary lamp will turn off, and the LED matrix will return to displaying the current time. Let's try the second quick message by pressing the quick message button below previous button. This button will send SOS fire information. The format of the displayed message includes the date and time of receipt, followed by the content of the quick message and the name, as well as the address of the sender of this quick message. In addition to using the buttons for quick messages, there's also a custom message feature. First, we select the message from the drop-down menu, then edit the message in the text box. Finally, click the send button to send the message. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, this video is useful and this SOS application can be used in your respective places, and it can also be further developed to be even better. You can download the files from the video description. Don't forget to like, and subscribe. See you in the next video.